Greetings, Earthlings and humans and any animals who may be listening in. Welcome to the Roseanne Bar podcast. This is going to be a corker because <laughs> I'm very excited to have uh, a great guest. And um, his name is Cash Patel. And we're going to celebrate. Hi, Noah. Hi, Cash. Hey, I'm so excited to be on the program. Thanks for having me on. This is going to be fun. So you see. Oh, what do you think? Isn't it the best? It's the best news in oh, what, seven years. The news cycle <laughs> sucks. And anyone that puts out the truth yeah. should deserve a trophy in my book. And you've been cranking on it for a while now, even though they come after you relentlessly. That just means you're actually putting out the truth. Right. Well, I take it as my battery because, uh, you know, how I got things configured being a crazy old woman is uh the more they attack me the uh the uh more i'm over the target of evil so it gives me so much energy whenever they attack me <laughs> i'm like yes i'm stronger uh, it's like the opposite of kryptonite you know it's oh, God you're absolutely force. right that's what when devin nunez and i did russia gate and we got shelled by the fake news media and adam schiff and company <laughs> i got i was getting pretty tired of it but he was like hey man when they're hitting us this hard it's like you said, you're over the target. So you just keep going. Yeah. And then we've been over the target and then they hit back so hard that it, I mean, that you know, they arrested <laughs> Trump. That, that was devastating for, uh, you know, all of us who believe in the constitutional republic called the United States of America. It was devastating. And uh, we were all rallying and everybody was griping, you know, a lot of babies on our side. Everywhere's a baby, you know. Well, of course, when I'm you're 70, everybody's a baby. But anyway, they're all whining. And <laughs> you're like, come on, man. We're going to, we're almost there. It, it's darkest before the dawn. And it, I was like trying to drag people, say, don't give up. Stand in it. Come on now. Come on. Not just me, but everybody, you know, we, you too, all of us. And uh, then to have this fantastic victory that we all believed in and, and, Hold for in Iowa. It's just fantastic. Yeah, look, I think what you saw is tragically a weaponization of the justice system and law enforcement community to target a political opponent. And all the neocons saying it's a right wing conspiracy and that Donald Trump's a Russian asset. We disproved that with the truth, exonerated Trump, and we showed that the DOJ and FBI unlawfully, illegally surveilled a political opponent. So anyone that thinks that that can't happen in modern day America, you need to recalibrate what news system you're watching. And when you fast forward to Iowa and all the disinformation campaigns they've put on and all the arrests that they've put Donald Trump through, I think what you saw last night, the resounding thumping that he gave to the rest of the candidates, doubling up on them combined, shows that Americans are listening. It's not a right-wing conspiracy theory. They are trying to take away our right to vote and the DOJ and FBI and state law enforcement authorities are trying to rig presidential elections because they don't like Donald Trump. And America is just coming back swinging. And I can't wait for the rest of the states. I can't wait till they get to Nevada here, my home state in a couple of weeks. We're ready. Well, it's just such a, you know, uh, you know, everybody was calling it the great awakening for the past. I don't know. What was it, Jake? How many? Six, seven years since. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about, let's just go from 2020. Let's go from election day 2020. The trauma we've all been under, those of us who are whatever you're going to call us. I don't even want to use any of their words. They're all irrelevant but we Awake. were all calling it the great awakening for so long and uh, everybody's saying this iowa what it proved cash you tell me what you think of this it, it's the end of the great awakening and the beginning of justice that's how i feel Look, about it. what do you i think? don't think you're wrong and all you have to do is watch msnbc or cnn i'm not advertising that you should do that but it's comedic every now and then and when you have people like uh brainless oh, joey behar or whatever her name is reed or which one i can't remember they all bleed together saying that somehow the victory is because donald trump's a racist you see how far they're reaching when you get the georgia <laughs> prosecutor showing up to right. church and saying she broke the law because she's a black woman and she's being attacked you broke the law because you're a corrupt prosecutor and you belong in prison. 
playing this race card That's is right. a tired, hackneyed old trick of the media. But when they go to it, you kind of know the message that Donald put, Trump put forward is winning the day. The next narrative they're talking about already, literally like hours after Iowa, is mm -hmm. Donald Trump's going to be a dictator. He's going to seize the media. <clears throat> right. Excuse me, the military. Based on what precedent is that going to happen? Donald Trump, as I remember when I was chief of staff for him at DOD, is the one that authorized the National Guard and Pelosi and Bowser shut it down on January 6th. If I had 10,000 guys in, in uniform right. like Donald Trump wanted, there would be no January 6th. So the only people that want the insurrection narrative are the radical left-wing agenda. And so when CNN is going to, he's gonna be a despot, he's gonna be a military dictator, you're talking about the guy that ended the forever wars, protected our troops, sealed our border, took on Iran, destroyed terrorists and brought home American hostages. And yeah, but what they do, remember uh, 101 of Marxism is blame your opponent <laughs> right. for what you do. Yeah. And that's what they did. Like when they said he's working for Russia, right? That's because they was working with Russia, selling our plutonium over there saying, oh, Donald Trump, you know, he's he's working for Russia. Then, you know, while they were weaponizing the FISA courts, you know, they talked about him being, you know, when they were spying on a sitting U.S. president, which that's treason. Hello? They're talking about him uh, committing treason in a phone call. They always tell you what they're up to when they with, accuse you. So now when they're accusing him of uh, he's going to be a dictator, it's because Biden is a GD dictator throwing his opponent arresting his opponent, arrest, using his uh, DOJ to arrest people for, you know, walking in the garden near the Capitol building on January 6th. What's that? But no, you're Look, Am I right? You, that is their theme. That is their playbook. They have the mainstream media to carry their disinformation campaigns to say Donald Trump is a dictator. Donald Trump's MAGA America movement is full of treasonous, seditionist conspirators. Donald Trump's movement somehow is the one that hijacked the DOJ and FBI. But in reality, as you pointed out, they have. Joe Biden, Merrick Garland, and Chris Wray have arrested thousands of people baselessly for their free speech conduct on in and around January 6th to do two things. One, kneecap Donald Trump's movement, and two, to allow the mainstream media to puppet the disinformation campaign that somehow Donald Trump committed insurrection. Right. Because what we're seeing is Donald Trump is defeating them in the courts, rightfully so, because he didn't commit insurrection. That's right. And now Thank they're God. moving to the narrative to say, well, you can't get him in the courts, so we'll just say he did it, and then he's going to be a dictator. But what you have is the biggest civics lesson, in my opinion, going on in modern American history, led by Donald Trump. He's showing Americans that yeah. Chris Ray's FBI is targeting houses of worship. He's showing Americans that Merrick Garland's DOJ right. is coming after you if you dare to be pro-life. He's showing Americans that if you free speech That's advocate right. for Donald Trump, the FBI is showing up at your doorstep after they unlawfully surveilled you. Mm -hmm. So all of this is getting out there. Mm -hmm. And also, don't forget, they're showing us, too, that the people who come and surround our house and threaten us and maybe light it on fire or kill a few of our neighbors in their mobs and gangs, their street gangs, like Hitler had his brown shirt. You know, it's exactly the same. They all get off. They kill a kid and they get six months. I mean, that's part of the story, too. It's so pre-war Germany. And I'm Jewish and I grew up with survivors, you know, in my grandma's apartment house there in Salt Lake City. So I studied this my whole life and I am not going to be silent while I watch it happen here. Definitely not. And it is happening here. And, uh, you know, they don't, they don't like Jews, of course. So they're, you know, they're bringing Jew haters from all over the world. Oh, come on in. Cause they're <laughs> setting us up for something really horrible. And yeah. when I say Jews, I mean all people of faith because they don't like none of them. They don't like any religion. They don't like Christians. They don't even like Muslims, even though a lot of them say they are, but they're a particular kind. They don't like none of us who believe in anything but the state because they're horrible, yeah. communist, Stalinist, fascist. They're every ist that there is, and they are all working together to get America because we are their target we are their target. We are targeted. We're not, we're not just targeted by, <clears throat> we're targeted by the deep state, the group of bad actors in right. government, along with their conspirators in the media. 
This is not a coincidence. Every time they right. roll out a campaign to target Donald Trump and his movement, it has been methodically thought through the senior leadership levels of the FBI, DOJ, the intelligence community, DOD, and we catch them every time. The first time we caught them, everybody was like, no right. way, not in modern day America. Now we're on Russiagate like 27.0. And they're going to come up with four more versions between now and election day because we are going to continue to defeat mm -hmm. their disinformation campaigns and so what we have to do and i think the reason your show is such a wild success is because people have stopped watching the hot garbage on the tv and started to tune into places where you can get the actual truth where you can educate voters to say hey right. this is not the time to say i told you so this is the time to say remember that 51 intel letter where you were lied to by your government the week before the election, those guys are putting in play mm -hmm. this next disinformation narrative about insurrection and dictatorship. Those guys are the ones trying to seize your right to vote freely for Donald Trump or anyone else for that matter. For, for who the candidate of it's your choice. Right. They hate, they talk about, they're talking about all the time out in the street. Well, Donald, you know, the their crap that they talk about pro-choice and then the only choice they give you the choice the only choice they give women is kill your baby or not that's your one choice so anyways they're out there talking about pro-choice but saying you don't get a choice in picking your president it's all bullshit you know what it's just 100 percent united field of bullshit and if people can't see through it to this point i just fear they're gonna have to go we can't wake them up the great awakening is happening because we turned it around. So enough of us are awake. Enough of us are awake now. We don't have to worry about the ones that ain't because we can make stuff happen and we can make things turn. Those people were sitting there counting ballot, paper ballots. I was rejoicing because you know what? I t I'm all in for Trump. I don't know if you know that, but I said, I'll do it. And I, I was on the, calling them people in Iowa, you know, that, that were signing people up and say, just saying, you know, we all know what our mission is, that we have to save our country. And there's only one way to save it, one choice to save it. And that's Donald Trump. And just watching it, knowing it this whole time is just, I mean, I thought I knew everything and I pretty much <laughs> do cash, but <laughs> Even I learned new things. Well, that's the fun part about being on great shows and where you don't have to explain the universe in 97 seconds because people actually want more than a headline snippet. They want to know how to get engaged, how to get involved, how to secure the vote. And when I go around the country and I speak at Trump engagements or, or you know, just trying to advance the America First movement, I keep seeing more and more people come in under the Donald Trump tent because they are tired of being lied to, but more importantly, they want our futures for our children and our children's children secured. And they see this as the election of our generational lifetimes. And that's good. People are ticked off. People are getting out there. People are turning off CNN and MSNBC. But what we have to do, and this is the part I always get yelled at when I talk to audiences. I was like, listen, it's great to be a conservative. I love it. It's great to be a Donald Trump supporter. I'm all in. But we can't go out there and tear each other down because we're not 100% on 100%. Listen, make seven out of 10. That's right. Those are Hall of Fame right. numbers. Like, let's yeah. get this thing done. We agree. We agree on so much yeah. more than we disagree on. And you better put it to the side right now because a house divided cannot stand Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. We're not going to let them take us apart like they tried to do in the Civil War so they could force that. Federal Reserve and all that crap and that phony. Con we are not going to go that way because we already did it. So we are going to unite despite differences and put them to the side. Unless they're despicable, then we're going we're not going to accept people that are despicable. Like right? Nikki Haley. Well, we can give her and Susan Sarandon a one-way ticket to Canada. Okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have the discernment. It's really a miracle that we do have the discernment to listen to somebody for a small soundbite and know exactly what it is they mean. That's a first. Oh, yeah. And look, you know, I think there should be like a video clip of the first like 30 seconds of Donald Trump's speech in Iowa last night, Ron DeSantis's and Nikki Haley's. Donald Trump went out there and said, hey, everybody come in under our tent. Our movement won a resounding victory because 
Donald Trump's America First agenda was accepted by so many Iowans so many times over. And that's going to translate out. And I think he was brilliant in his speech. And he focused on national security because national security, I think, is going to be the issue of this election cycle, the border, Iran, Russia, China, and everything else. And then you have Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis coming out there. We punched our ticket through to New Hampshire by doing what? Getting less than 20% of the vote? And then Nikki Haley's out there saying Mm -hmm. how monumental of a success it was to finish in third place. Listen, in politics, you either win or you go home. And uh, Donald Trump won last night. And these other two are sitting there lying to the world. And the establishment class is going to help them. They're going to give them another $100 million. They're going to go yeah, out there and campaign. They're going to spend on the ads. Who do you think, who's their money coming from? Where are they getting their money oh, to do that? Oh, that's simple. You think? So the you Rhino know. establishment, Paul Ryan class of the universe, the defense industrial complex, where Nikki Haley sits on the board of Boeing, or used to, and all that style mm-hmm. of money that is so anti- Donald Trump, because he exposed the corruption in the swamp, he destroyed the ability of these swamp monsters to go in there and get these big government contracts, these big government paydays, and they hate him for it. And that's all that money is yeah. going to Haley. All that money is going to DeSantis. But you can't buy an election. How much of it goes? How much? How much of it goes? Like enters that Ukrainian pipeline where it comes back into their private well, so, pockets, though. You know, isn't it just all a money So to me, the defense thing? industrial complex does a lot of good work, but I think it's one of the most corrupt institutions in the United States government. You can't send $130 billion yeah. worth of aid to the Ukraine and not have these companies be enriched and not have these politicians be enriched because mm-hmm. what they're doing is getting Congress to ship this money out to their companies And then we're shipping our weaponry, our manning, our systems over there. And by the way, the DOD inspector general just came out and said, we lost a billion dollars worth of equipment. We lost a billion dollars worth of equipment. Uh, That's what we're arming the world. That's all they can do is arm people and they arm both sides of every damn fight. And you know what? They take our kids and use them as a. And Donald Trump's the only president that came in and said, no, I'm done with the forever wars. I'm ending them. He instructed us to wind mm-hmm. out of them. We had a plan for Afghanistan. We wound out of Syria, Iraq, and Somalia. And we were doing great. And we handed that off to Biden. And we said, this isn't a political thing. This is a national security thing. As you said, stop killing American service members endlessly in wars overseas. Americans are sick of it. Those are working yeah. class children. That's mm-hmm. what I, it's just all a class war to me. That's how I see it. That's how Martin Luther King saw it too before mm-hmm. his life was removed. But it's like, okay, well, we can't give these kids no jobs because, you know, there are no jobs. We neither put them in prison. We shipped all the jobs over to other countries where we can go on vacation and our, our third wife can get her endangered species uh, mink. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, we'll eat the livers of, uh, who knows who, but, uh, oh my God, they're so horrible and evil. And I mean, but- they are, and they're doing it all with our hard earned tax monies, which we can't even afford to go, you know, replace parts in the cars. I mean, I can, but the neighbors I'm around, they can't, they sweat every no, every right. cent. <clears throat> Damn it. I and mean, to bring this thing full mad. circle, you know, people are saying, oh, we're not in any more world wars. What's going on in the Ukraine? What's going on in Israel? And to highlight the catastrophe that is the Biden-Austin National Security Plan, look at what just happened in the Red Sea. Two U.S. Navy Special Warfare operators were murdered, were killed, because of Biden's reckless agenda to go out there and grab a political headline. When U.S. service members die in a theater of war, that means we're in a fight. And Iran is taking this fight to us and killing our innocent uh, men and women in uniform needlessly because Joe Biden and Lloyd Austin are out there chasing a political headline. And the mainstream media, this is just shocking. Just think about this. In a time of war, the mainstream media is largely ignoring the fact that two U.S. service members were killed on an operation that should never have been authorized in the first place. And that would oh, never yeah. have needed right. to occur mm-hmm. had we had a commander in chief like Donald Trump. And the gravity of that, having been on the flight line, 
having received a dignified transfer and having handed loved ones over to their families, which is the hardest thing you'll ever have to do in government service, Donald Trump put an agenda out to make sure that we would never have to do that again. And here Joe Biden is lighting it on fire. It's like Obama's fourth, is it Obama's yeah. third term? Third. Yeah. And it's he had to hurry up and figure out a way to uh, undo everything that Trump did, which was to undo everything that Obama did. So now we're seeing the undoing of the undoing, you know, he's protecting himself. And, and I, I just feel like are all his, all his whole group that, that, uh, is so widespread in our government. Um, I think they will stop at nothing to, uh, shut down fact. Oh, you're absolutely out. right. They're the Kings of disinformation. Remember the people who authored Russiagate are now running DOJ and FBI. Remember the people that were in Obama's administration are now the heads of the most senior levels of government in the Biden administration. It's not a coincidence. Joe Biden clearly isn't running anything. I mean, you just have to watch him for like seven seconds. But as a national security guy, and this is probably unpopular with a lot of people, I'm cheering for him. I want him to succeed on the national security mission. I don't want more soldiers to die. I don't want Iran to get a nuclear weapon. And I want Russia and China to stand down. And I think that's okay to cheer him on. But he has made it abundantly clear. He does not only want the support of the American people, he doesn't care about the will of the American people. He will light our taxpayers on dollars on fire. And he has gotten us in, I don't care what the media says, we are in three wars. We are in three wars. I know. And just because Congress hasn't authorized least, it, it's just bogus. We're in at least three wars, but then we're we're in an oh, information yeah. war, like Alex Jones yeah. says. It's info wars here in America. And we've already, you know, we pretty much came that close to completely losing because truth was not allowed on any news outlet. And it very it doesn't it it's not really allowed on mass media except for here on the internet where, where they watch us very, very closely. So we can't say the wrong code words that'll set everything off. But, you know, it is an information war against yeah. the voters, the taxpayers, you know, the people who do the work that keep shit going. How do you do that? How can you be so stupid or corrupt or blind that you actually attack your own tax? The simple, they want to stay in power. They don't care. Joe Biden's a product of 50 years of being in the swamp. He ran for office like, I don't know, 86 times, plagiarized speeches 12 times. I guess that's a thing of the radical left. They just plagiarize stuff and get rewarded for it. Whether you're at Harvard, you can become yeah. president there or president of the United States. But <laughs> they don't yeah. care mm -hmm. about what the constituency actually wants. Mm -hmm. They don't care about what Americans actually care for in everyday America throughout this country. They just care about getting reelected. And the media, as long as it's not Donald right. Trump, the media will be your best friend. And the rhino establishment class will come to your aid, even if you are a radical left wing agenda. -ist. Think about this. Paul Ryan would probably vote for Nancy Pelosi over Donald Trump because that man just hates Donald Trump so much. Oh, for That's sure. how far askew the, ra the, the conservative movement is in this country because they seem to think they are the stalwarts, the Liz Cheney's, the... Halliburton's, the Paul Ryan's of the conservative movement. But here's the reality. Donald Trump is the conservative movement. I hope uh, you guys are enjoying the episode with my mother and Cash Patel. We just wanted to run by a couple things with you. Uh, Mom, you know who we've been doing ads for the wellness company with, you know, that's Dr. Drew's company, Dr. McCullough with mm -hmm. those uh, mm -hmm. med kits. It's going yeah. great. Their website's had some problems with deliveries, but we're getting it sorted out. Um, we're happy with them for the most part, but they actually have a new product that I think is really, really important. And you're going to love yeah, this one. It's really important. Yeah. And I do love it. It's called spike support and it's uh, basically like the med kit, but it's for spike proteins that may be showing up in your body for some reason. Um, Who knows how they get in there, but you might as <laughs> yeah. well get rid of them, right? What is it? It's a pill. It says here, Spike Support's unique blend of natural ingredients aims to block and dissolve spike protein in your body so you can get back to that pre-COVID feeling and stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. So mm -hmm. if you go to twchealth forward slash RB, 
Mm -hmm. which is the same as the med kit. Use the promo code RB, you'll get 10% off. So that's twc.health forward slash RB. And you can still get the med kits that we talk about a lot. This yeah. is spike protein. So if you uh, if you are vaccinated or you're around people that's that are vaccinated, it's possible that you may be in danger of spike proteins replicating in your system. Could so, be. Yeah, or if you know someone's vaccinated, you could actually just order this and sneak it in their food. He changed it, and That's they ate right. him for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Well, a lot of conservatives hate him too because I always say, "Well, he's he's <laughs> the populist, wide populist middle," and so you know, each side is like, "Huh?" They don't get, they don't quite understand because I think that their worst fear on both sides is populism. You know. And that is what America first means. So mm -hmm. I think that he's taken a conservative bent on populism, which is why everyone loves I think he's him. Take, yeah. Because no, he's all taking like a modern too. day approach and just sort of taking a wrecking ball to politics in DC. You know, he's got a lot of brilliant conservative ideologies right. from his first administration, and he's taken a very right. pro national security position. But some of his positions are pretty moderate when it comes to social. Um, justice and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that because America has gravitated no. towards that global sort of policy reach that they want out. I mean, look, you know, it's it's funny. I, it's, it's actually ironic that a brown guy is about to say the following. But do you know who put more black people in jail than any two po elected officials in modern U.S. history? Joe Biden well, and Kamala Harris. Of course I do. Joe Biden with I, his 1998 oh, crime yeah. bill and Kamala Harris when she was the attorney general right. of California. It's ridiculous. Do you know who got all those guys out? She locked up black parents. She locked up black parents for their I mean, kids being truant. And the, and, the, and the guy that actually did social justice, criminal justice reform and reversed the Biden era 98 mm -hmm. crime bill was Donald Trump. Is the racist? Donald yeah. Trump. Right. He's yeah. A He's a racist who hired this guy. It's hilarious. I love that one. That one's the best for me. <laughs> Because they always accuse yeah. you of what they do. Right. You know, but you got to know that. You got to know how Marxists are, you know. It's, it is by any means necessary. They got to lie, so, lie up one side and down the other. That's what they'll do. They love to laugh at the people they've tricked, too. I've seen those parties. They love it, uh, of how stupid the people are to believe them. Even Hillary Clinton said it. The Democrats are easy to control because most of them are stupid. She's quoted saying that. They don't like each other. They don't like Americans. Mm -hmm. They just go out there and do whatever's necessary to grab the power. <clears throat> and Hillary Clinton was probably the best, as you pointed out, the, the best version they have of that. She will destroy anyone. Yeah. to try to get into elected office. I'm trying to goad her into running again because I think it would be fun if Trump ran again. <laughs> I do. Don't you think she would? I, I was always waiting when they're going to take out Biden they're and somebody put her in. in. I don't know who it's going to be. It's pr maybe Gavin Newsom, but it's not going to be Joe Biden. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's going to be Michelle Obama with Hillary <laughs> as her vice. Oh, my. I think, oh, man. I, <laughs> The Democratic universe uh, might actually implode at a ticket like that. That would be that would be something. <laughs> They'll do something because they can't lose. If they lose, they're all going to go to jail and they know it. So or even worse than jail, which would be what a fair <laughs> trial by the American people. That would be their worst. <laughs> it's there. Or that they would have to pay back the money that they stole from us. That'd be even worse than jail, I think, for yeah. them. They're so corrupt and, uh, you know, there they are uh, encouraging all of this stuff that happened in front of the White House where, you know, do you think those people that were there chanting free, free Palestine are the same people that are uh, BLM and Antifa? Do they just always show up in the right numbers at the right time to parrot the, uh, you know, Marxist bullshit? Do you think they just come on buses and we're you know, the outfit that they wanted you know, to wear. I'm sure it's a mixed bag. I don't really, you know, study the demographics of that universe. But what I would like to see is when you have a group of marauders assaulting the White House, 
in large numbers threatening the security yeah. of our center of government, maybe there's one arrest, just one. If, you know, when yeah. you're defacing White House property, maybe there's one arrest, just one. <laughs> and you see here the two tier system of justice that is ruining our country because Americans are seeing this. You, you can be a pro-Palestinian mob in front of a Biden White House and nothing's going to happen to you. But if you're a pro-America first movement, a uh, free speech protester, and you go to the United States Capitol en masse, they're going to arrest you a thousand times over. And we need a justice mm -hmm. system, especially as a former prosecutor. I want to go back to DOJ and say, what are you guys doing? Where are the courageous law abiding citizens that serve this country apolitically? Where are you guys getting off not prosecuting these, these people rampaging outside the White House? And it's not the first time it happened. And it's not the last time it happened, but the media right. will cover for them. But I think Americans are starting to see the, the juxtaposition. Do you think they're afraid, those people? Because you know there are good people, you know, hiding and they're probably afraid for their lives or they're afraid for their retirement funds or something like that. That's usually what keeps people silent. But, you know, they don't want to risk everything they've worked for. So they keep their head down, you know, their nose clean. But uh, what could what could it be that's keeping them beside great fear? that's keeping them from- uh, Look, I think you're right. It's, it's, a, uh -oh. it's a monumentally lose everybody? difficult task to take on the United States government. And they're gonna hate you for it, everybody. Um, I know. And when you expose that level of corruption, <laughs> you either have to be surrounded by a great support and leadership cadre, or you're gonna get crushed. And so I used to work with all these folks at mm -hmm. DOJ, at FBI, at DOD, in the intelligence community, all these different locate. You're right. The overwhelming amount of people that are still there are amazing Americans who just want to get after it. But the leadership government gangsters yeah. that are in charge of these places have ruined the mission sets of these institutions. And so I think it's going to take a Donald Trump to come in there and reorient this personnel, fire those individuals who are breaking the law, operating unethically or breaking the chain of command. And then you'll start to see a lot more of these other folks that have been sort of scared into hiding, come out and say, yeah, we knew this was going on, but they threatened to fire us. They threatened to take my ability to feed my family and pay rent. And I think we need a lot of information. We've seen that happen to so many whistleblowers like those, the, the uh, Clinton Foundation whistleblowers yeah. and the FBI guys that, you know, they took their jobs. They, they their family was, was homeless, you know, had to fall upon the American people who, who in their generosity reached out to help. But, oh, my God, that was somebody saying it's like Julian Assange, isn't it? It's like anybody who uh, tried to expose what what was really going on. They paid more of a price for informing on the people than they. Oh, yeah. Paid. I was in the middle of that FBI uh, whistleblower thing. And look, those guys you're talking about, Steve Friend, Kyle Seraph and Garrett O'Doyle, those are great Americans. I don't even know what their politics are. Right. And I didn't even care. I just said, oh, they've got credible information. Put that before Congress. And what does Congress do? And Silver Spoon, Adam Goldman, a.k.a. Watermelon Head Jr., comes out and says, Cash Patel bought and paid for whistleblowers <laughs> because my foundation dared to provide them with money so that they could pay rent and take care of their kids because the FBI yeah. and Chris Ray lied to them executed retribution because they exposed the corruption of the January 6th investigation and how it was being misapplied so that Chris Ray could go to Congress and say domestic violent terrorism is on the rise and remove agents from the field who are chasing down child sex predators and ship these cases to Washington mm -hmm. so they could have their political win. I believe there are way more and more whistleblowers like that waiting. And I think, and I fault to a degree, our Republican majority in the House for not providing an avenue to get these guys and girls through so that we can get the information before Election Day. Well, I think that they alert. I agree. And I think that, uh, you know, that there there's a lot of hidden agendas going on, too, that we we don't know about. Like I was thinking, you know, a lot of these uh, formerly Democrat black voters, you know, African-American voters are now, you know, coming to Trump. And I've been seeing that for a long time. It's one of my particular interests because um, I've always 
been involved in, you know, a civil rights uh, movement thing. But um, uh, I think one thing that is good about the DOJ and the corrupt Department of Justice is the fact that people are seeing, maybe who doubted uh, the corruption of uh, a prejudice Department of Justice, that, uh, dang man, this is what they have done for generations to black men, hence one in four of them is in prison in the United States. So now we can see how they do do corrupt politics if they don't like somebody or they need to turn in somebody to fill the jails or to get reelected. They don't care. You know, they'll just take any black guy who happens to look like, you know, the uh, picture somebody made of the uh, offender and they'll arrest him. That's happened 10 million times in America over the years. So, so now we can see how that works too. And I think, I think that a lot of people, when I talk to them about why they support Trump, black people, that's what they say is that it's unraveling what they have and people of color and working class people have had to deal with when you don't have the money to actually afford a decent lawyer to defend you. And you see how, you know, the, the two lawyers, the prosecutors and all that corrupt prosecutors, they don't care. They withhold evidence from defense attorneys every day. They don't care. The guy's black. They need a black guy in prison. You know, people are released after 26 years in prison because they find the DNA. You know, that is pretty commonplace in America. And it's so vile. It is so vile. And it is good to see it exposed. And they're doing all that to Trump. And we're seeing it. Maybe we were blind to it before, but that they have no they have no sorrow or compunction about manufacturing evidence or withholding it from proper defense. They got Trump having a trial with no jury in New York. Hey, look, <clears throat> and it doesn't just happen at the federal level, as you've been highlighting. And it doesn't just happen criminally. It's civilly. It's at the state level. I mean, you would think that after the FBI, and I call them Lovebirds 1.0, Strzok and Page, after they got caught trying to rig a presidential election because of their hatred for Donald Trump, which we exposed during the Russiagate investigation, you would think that the American public mm -hmm. and the media would say, we can never let that happen again. We can never have that kind of weaponization. Right. And when we exposed it, and when Donald Trump talked about it, they were like, nope, right-wing conspiracy. Now, if you fast forward to what's going down in Georgia with Lovebirds 2.0, you now have at the state mm -hmm. level a district attorney who's responsible for enforcing the law goes out and hires the guy she's having an affair with and brings him who has no criminal experience by the way in terms of prosecuting anyone hires him pays him six hundred and fifty thousand dollars lies to the court goes on vacation court, goes on a yacht him. ship whatever vacation wherever increases their own wealth by at least half a million dollars. Right. And this person is in charge of prosecuting Donald Trump. And then she goes to a church and says the reason she is being castigated for her conduct is because she's a black woman. The reason you are being attacked mm -hmm. for your conduct is because Playbook. you are a criminal. And you are a hypocrite because you're a district mm -hmm. attorney saying you're the one enforcing the laws. And as a former prosecutor and public defender, I am beyond offended that no one, thankfully, actually, this just is happening right now. Corey Mills, a great representative from Florida, finally filed from Congress a bar complaint with the state of Georgia demanding an investigation into Fannie Williams and her paramour, whatever you call that guy. And that's the first thing they should happen. They should be disbarred immediately. The next thing that should happen is that right. case should be thrown out in its entirety. And I hope, I hope there's some good people in Congress that are going to go get the text messages and emails. Because if you don't take those people to talk oh, the entire will time. Do it. Marjorie will. Marjorie will do it. We need that t-shirt. Marjorie will do it. <laughs> Sick Marjorie. Somebody's got to get him because it will show <laughs> but, uh, the animosity, you know, putting all jokes aside, just like Strzok and Page insurance policies, hatred for Donald Trump, weaponized system of justice, mm -hmm. it will show yeah. that same conduct at the state level <clears throat> during election year for one reason, to rig a presidential election. <clears throat> That's right. But look what that Fawny, her name's Fawny, uh, 
Fawny. Everybody ah. says Fanny, but it's not. It's Fawny. And you know what's funny about Fawny is that I saw a picture of her in a tight dress and she has a penis. You know, <laughs> no, be, Fawny yeah, has yeah. a penis. Let me write the time code. <laughs> I, it's true. Bonnie yeah, has a pretty, penis. Pretty. And you know what a penis is, Chef <laughs> Jake? It's true. A penis is the a belt, an overhanging belly. That is oh, the penis. Word. You're saying, yeah, oh, yeah. it sounds like you're saying penis. Well, a it's penis. Michelle, a, bon Michelle has a don't penis. Don't go there, Jake. Bonnie oh. has a <laughs> penis. I'm sorry. She does. So she has a large penis. And then she, she said she stumbled. So I said, perhaps she should have her. Panis, Bonnie should have. Tuck, tuck. Yeah, I don't want to. I, I, I want to talk about Rolled anything up. but that. <laughs> okay, sorry. I knew you cash leaves for that I, one. I, it comes in my mind. I have some sort yeah. of Tourette's. I'm sorry. Yeah. But anyway, back to. But Bonnie, <laughs> what she's doing is she's she's actually validating that it was okay for all of those white guys to stand there and send. Uh, innocent black man to prison she mm -hmm. she's actually validating that in so many ways you know going yeah. hey i'm gonna get in on this grip too. forget justice <laughs> uh, you know i may as well make this work for me too this horrible system that does that to people why not get in and on myself well, she wants to make some money She's validating yeah. that horrible She wants system. the glory. She huh? wants the fame. She wants to be the person that, quote unquote, gets Trump. And maybe her community would be better served if she actually prosecuted real criminals. And maybe the murder rate would go down. And maybe the child right. sex trafficking rate would go down. And maybe drug overdoses would go down. You know, simple stuff like that. But they don't care about actual law enforcement. That's what I mean. They care about getting their name in the headlines. They care about being glorified by the mainstream media. And they care about being the ones who will champion the disinformation campaign all in an effort to get Donald Trump because they will light the constitution on fire for their own selfish needs and justify it because it's, Oh, it's Donald Trump on the other side. And I think. But Donald Trump, I think he, you know, he says it himself that they're not after him. They're after us and he's just in the way. And that's what people really need to hear because that is the truest thing oh, he's yeah, ever said. Yeah. They don't like him. Well, that guy's the juggernaut us. of justice. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I used to work for him in the last administration, he, that man didn't sleep. Everybody's like, oh, he's on. He's on. It's, the, the hilarious thing right now is they, they love to tell us how hard Joe Biden works. Who has been on vacation 40 percent of the time he's been in the White House and who has a lid at like 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. every day, meaning the guy doesn't work. And then they would tell us in the Trump administration, and I probably did like 45 trips with the president as a national security representative. And they were like, oh, he's golfing or he's doing this. He's not. The man never stopped working. I would literally like fall asleep in meetings. I was so tired and he was just going and he was driven by a singular desire to improve this nation. And people hate hearing that because they're like, wait a second, it's probably true. Um, <laughs> and it was and it is. And I think that's what's still motivating him to this. Like, I don't know how he does it. I really don't. The amount of energy it takes to just take on one of these lunatic prosecutions doing that. It's I know I can't believe, I can't believe his commitment either, but I kind of get it because I'm like that too, because the more they come after you, the stronger you get, if you get your wiring right, you know, and mm -hmm. you're on the right side and you know, you're on the right side and you know that you've been pushing so hard that there's no way you can't win. Well, everyone, uh, again, I hope you're enjoying this episode with my mother and Cash Patel. I think it's amazing. Mom, you're on fire this episode. Um, but I wanted to take a minute to talk about one of our sponsors. It's an old friend of the show. We want to continue the relationship going. So Field of Greens, your favorite. Remember they crushed yeah. the fruit and vegetables? Yeah, I got one of those uh, uh, tiny little blenders. It's so good for that because you can put real fruit in it. And add to it. It's good. <laughs> are you doing this? Are you doing the shake blender or you got it like a ninja? Yeah, that blender that's like a bullet. Yeah. So you can put real fruit in on top of that and some ice cubes. It's really good that way. Well, let's tell everyone the good news. If you go to fieldofgreens.com and use the promo code RB, that's promo code RB for Roseanne Barr. Figure that out. Fieldofgreens.com. You will get 15% off your order. So. 
I highly recommend going there. Again, it's just a powder for these you don't know. It's just vegetables and fruit. They freeze dry it, they pulverize it. There's no other chemicals. It's pure fruit, pure vegetables. You mix it yeah. with water, they give you a handshake and blender. You shake it up, you drink it, you do one of those a day. You're getting six whole fruits and vegetables every day. You don't have time for it. It's a healthy way to do it. And there's no weird chemicals, no spike proteins, none of that shit. And I know he knows that. There's no way he can't win. All he needs is for people to see the truth that he's exposing to them. And they are. And it's really cool to see it for me, too, I, I uh, that I see it and that, um, you know, I get calls from all over the world and they have they have increased with, uh, you know, such vigor that people are really, really awake. And it's why I say there's enough of us now. There's enough of us awake now that we can we can demand paper ballots and, you know, hand counts. And that that's really what what we need. And we need yep. to do it fast. Mm -hmm. I don't know how things are going to go in the future, but it, I think it's irrelevant about, we just need that. To, we need to work on that one. Don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, I mean, look, right, securing Cash? the vote, is just such a simple constitutional notion in the United States of America. And when you saw it last night on TV, and it was hilarious to watch CNN put a camera on paper ballots and then comment on them. Uh, but it was so simple. <laughs> yeah. Every look, here's a paper ballot. Here's a vote. Here it's counted. Boom. Voter ID. You know, and that there are people out there that want to destroy that simple concept. If you look behind what their impetus is, it's to basically rig another election. It does. They don't care about right. the system right now. And I think what we have to do is, you know, what you're doing. And I call out every, you know, every American, like whether you're in Hollywood or New York City or wherever you are and you're a moderate or conservative or whatever. Gone are the days where you can be quiet because you don't want to be outed as a Trump supporter. You got to man up and get right. in the mix. I don't want to hear you mail it into me in four mm -hmm. years and saying, oh, you know, you didn't do everything you could. And this is why Donald Trump didn't get elected. You didn't do everything you could because you were too cowardly to stay on the sidelines because you cared about your image. Care more about this country. And if we had more people like Roseanne who didn't right. care what people think, then we'd have a better chance of winning. So mm -hmm. that's my challenge to everybody out there. There are a lot of us. You'll find a new host of friends. And the people that stopped talking to you, they were never your friends to begin with. And that's the easiest trade mm -hmm. we can make. They're right? idiots. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I know that this information war, you know, it's fueled by words. And so my passion is to string to, you know, find the right words. Hopefully I ask God for help and to string them together so that it, it, pe when people hear them, they'll go, hey, what? I never thought of that. But it, you know, because once your mind is opened, it doesn't go back closed. You know, it opens more and more. So that's that's what I think this war is about, too. And uh, so I say, you know, uh, all of this stuff was um, how we were worked for a really long time in order for them to steal our voice and our election. Uh, we were really set up and smoked and, you mm -hmm. know, harmed and uh, in, in physically and monetarily for a long, long time that to enable them to steal an election and mm -hmm. then to hurry up and, uh, you know, signify it so that we couldn't undo it. Mm -hmm. And all of that was, uh, no accident either. And, uh, you know, what I, I like to say, like down there in Georgia, those votes that they were throwing out, you know, what's horrible is the votes that they were throwing out in Georgia. People have speculated they were in black neighborhoods and they were throwing out the votes of black people for Trump. So you, you think about that in the regular way that the Democrats have always like been for slavery and for Jim Crow and then saying the Republicans are the racists, but they started the KKK and all that. And they threw out votes for that black people made for Trump in Georgia. And, and that's pretty much proven. I mean, nobody will write it up, but everybody's saying it. Um, that can't be okay. That can't be okay, and it can't be overlooked by people who say they don't like systematic racism. No, it and it's our overlooked. job, our job, to go out there and mobilize people who weren't necessarily part of the voting process um, in this country in the past. And I think 
with Donald Trump's leadership. That's what he's doing. People who never paid attention, people who never registered to vote, people who never cared to do anything in their communities. And that's okay. That's their right to totally do that. That's what America is all about. Are now saying, wait a second, this has gone way overboard. And our job is to mobilize them with mm -hmm. the truth and information and places to get the truth so that when they go to the booths and when they go back to their communities, they bring more and more people. You know, I think the greatest strategy is obviously Donald Trump's Agenda 47. But I think getting so many people to support it that it doesn't matter what rig job these guys perform in this cycle is the key to victory. And I think if Nikki Haley or DeSantis or whoever is on the left literally had one better policy on anything, we would have heard it. We would have heard Ron DeSantis. They don't have any policies except saying that they don't like that's Trump. That, that's the only thing yeah. anybody is running on. He's the only one with any ideas, and they hate ideas. They don't want the boat rock because they're just sailing away with all no, our money. You're absolutely right. And look, they mm -hmm. don't they don't have a better way to seal the border. They don't have a better way to take out Iran and secure our country. They don't have a better way to take on Russia and the CCP. They don't have a better way to stop the CCP fentanyl that's killing our children. They don't have a better way to get after the drug traffickers and the human smugglers. And the difference between any other presidential cycle and this one is not only is it Donald Trump's agenda that's leading out winning, America saw it and the world got a taste of it in the first administration. And if we weren't kneecapped by the deep state government gangsters that we had to fight internally, we would have gotten twice as much done in the Trump administration. And I think as much as that excites us and Trump supporters, I think it scares the opposition doubly so because they know if he comes in with this kind of momentum and support, he is going to irrevocably change Washington, D.C. and the swamp and people in government who have used it as a bridge to financial wealth and fame are terrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll return America to the American people, as he said the first time around. And these people that say Trump, if he comes back, he's going to be on a tear and be a <laughs> Uh, you know, there was no evidence of any of that in his first term. So save it. Save your hysteria. You know, they run on hysteria. That's what's kind of funny and kind of horrible because uh, they they seem also. Am I am I right? Is They seem also. I don't know if they're I that would be something I shouldn't say, but it seems something always seems to occur mm -hmm. that's like a horror or a terror or mm -hmm. a mass horror mm -hmm. and uh, that they, they seem to, it seems to happen at the right time mm -hmm. uh, to fill up the news cycles, to cover up for something else. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just worry about what they're going to do between now and election day, what coincidences are going to occur to further terrorize and PTSD the American people. So they're coming up with it. Look, their number one weapon is their disinformation campaigns. It's their number one mm -hmm. election methodology. They will just make stuff up and the mainstream media will trot it out. Trump's a dictator. Yeah. Trump's an insurrectionist. MAGA supporters are domestic terrorists. You know, America first supporters are people who want crime to go up. They'll, whatever it is, they'll come out there and tout it then the talking heads will relay it. And then unfortunately, the piece of America that watches that news cycle will be like, oh, wow, look at this. This sounds really bad. And I think what we're doing successfully mm -hmm. along this arc of the Donald Trump movement is weaning people off those networks and saying, I'm done watching that. You guys lied to me. And mm -hmm. we're going to defeat these disinformation campaigns. So it, it is a big movement and it's up to us to help augment the Trump um, you know, campaign and the Trump policies and the Trump agenda, because, you know, no one, nobody can do it alone. He's the, he's the best leader we have for it. Um, but I think we got to find venues to just right. keep cracking in the communities um, and areas and say, OK, you guys normally wouldn't participate in this or watch this or listen to this. But are you tired of paying mm -hmm. $12 for a glass of milk and a PB&J? <laughs> yep. um, you know, the one thing the left does that works in our favor uh, because it always defeats 
itself is that their um, continual factioning because, you know, somebody said, oh, somebody called you the wrong gender or whatever, they misgender, you know, some something makes them hate the other one that makes them have to go start a whole new left mm -hmm. with more alphabet letters in it. You know what I mean? But I, I want, I like that you said it and I, I, we're coming to the end and I, I just like to reiterate for the people on our side, which is the vast middle main street. It isn't, it isn't mm -hmm. a, just a small radical group. It's the vast middle. Don't, faction please don't start factioning and do what the left does and that's how they eat their own tail don't do that remember that there's far more we agree on than uh we disagree on right isn't that like we have to keep that one we have to keep that one we can't let we, we can't let people start thinking that we live in a theocracy and only a particular religion can uh, be proper patriots. No, you're that totally right. Look, that, that's what they want us to do. The radical left wants us to take this bait and start ripping each other apart because we don't dis because we disagree on one or two things, and we can't do that because it will cost us the next election cycle. We have the better movement. We have the better leader. We have the better policies behind Donald Trump. And if people want to get mobilized, selfish plug, go buy my bestseller, Government Gangsters, right now. Donald Trump. Um, oh, Joe good. Biden tried for ten months to bury my manuscript. I had to sue him in federal court to get my own book out. President Trump calls it the blueprint for 2024. Wow. You want to destroy the deep state? The receipts are in here. The stories are in here. The solutions are in here. Donald Trump made it a bestseller. So go to governmentgangsters.com. How do we get it? Do we get it? Yep, it's it on, on the Jeff Bezos network. It's also on governmentgangsters.com if you just want a separate uh, siloed way of getting the book. Yeah, but I, do. Um, I think you'll really find what we talk about in the book is simple, that there is a deep state, how we identified it, who the government gangsters are. I named them by name. There's like 75 of them in there. And most importantly, how we change the agencies and departments in this government under Donald Trump's leadership to save our country. Can I ask you one last thing? Department of Energy, what do you have to say about yeah, that? Yeah, I used to work with them very closely. Look, the DOE is the bedrock of our nuclear arsenal. And we need to upgrade a significant portion of that grid and infrastructure. I mean, conversation for another day. But the DOE's mission is critical to the defense of this country. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, because I, I would like you to come back on and talk about that more after we have a few more victories. But we are on our way to victory. God bless. And God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and uh, it was it was uh, really fun to talk to you sorry i went into my dirty comic <laughs> no, yeah. there for it wouldn't me. have been a show without it thanks so much for having me this is a great venue and i'll definitely <laughs> come back soon all right everybody it's uh, it's me and my mom again that was an amazing episode with cash i'm sure everyone will agree very exciting uh, I, I waited a long time to talk to him for those of you who don't Bravo. know zipix is a company that makes infused toothpicks. And I know that sounds weird. This is what got my, my mom to quit. And they've got a ton of flavors. We got bourbon flavored, just a Spice Island clove. That might help a lot of drunkards get off the booze. Well, that's really what it's about. This could be a pleasure thing or, you know, just a leisure mm -hmm. activity to have one. But if you're smoking, and you want to quit, I highly suggest the Zipix brand. And if you just are um, not wanting to quit smoking, no judgment, but you don't Maybe want to smell like smoke. a social toothpick user. <laughs> right. <laughs> or let's say you're on an airplane or a concert or around family, you don't want to smoke, or you're around a baby, you don't want secondhand smoke, you can actually get your nicotine fix with these. Ditch the cigarettes, ditch the vape, and get some nicotine-infused toothpicks at ZipixToothpicks.com. And you'll get 10% off your first order if you use the code Roseanne. So again, that's ZipixToothpicks.com. Use the promo code Roseanne, you'll get 10%. And you can now get nicotine fixed anywhere you want. You can do these at the hospital. You can be in the emergency room because your lung's collapsing. Uh -huh. in is good. Uh -huh. No smoke. Anyway, let's get back to the show. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Cash. And is there anything else you'd like to plug before you go? Your oh, I'm on Truth Social. Social. The only place you'll find me is at Cash on Truth Social. If you think you're following me on some social network that's not Truth, you're following somebody. It ain't me. Well, 
that was an amazing episode. Cash had to leave. You know, the last few episodes we've been doing, everyone has to leave because we're interviewing people that are like in the midst of the Trump campaign or the world changing. We're very, very fortunate to have more. We're we so happy they made time for us in a really incredibly busy schedule. And we're, we're yeah. thankful and appreciative of it. Uh, while we were so happy to get Vivek for, I think we got him approximately 46 minutes, didn't we? It was 47, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. But, uh, you know, he said he had a feeling he was going to do well in Iowa. And I told him, mm, I'm going to kick your ass in Iowa. You know, because I was there and I, I was campaigning for our, pre, you know, for Trump uh, with the people in Iowa who were registering people to vote, which that's the most important thing. Everything is very important on the local level. People are forgetting that. Right. And I love seeing them. The greatest joy of my life was seeing them count paper ballots in Iowa. And of course, Trump came out the winner because they were paper ballots hand counted. There was no cheating allowed. In other right. words, everyone voted for Trump. So yeah. that's what we need to do everywhere. But uh, I thought Vivek was so gracious in the way he stepped aside. He wasn't like Nikki or uh, or Ron, you know, to keep on going the fight, to keep keep trying to separate Americans. But, you know, if you know the real script of what's going on, you see those two are, pre are useful or they wouldn't be allowed to do what they're doing. But Vivek was useful to Trump. He was the most useful to Trump against... DeSantis. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we're in the great awakening. And I said, with this Iowa victory, this proved to me that the great awakening is over. We won. We don't need any more people than we have now to be awake and aware, because now we have the numbers to push the great um, justice. Justice is next after awakening. And, and that's what we'll do in 2024. Um, so I, I thought it was just fantastic. And I thought Vivek was fantastic in his concession speech. And I'm telling you, Trump could do a lot worse than to uh, choose him for vice, which was why I asked him, would you accept vice? Because right. the young people love him, and that's a big consideration. It's a huge one because I think they will decide the, uh, they'll be a big factor in deciding the election. They always are. And he, he did do really well with with the young people. And that's what he said he would do. I mean, he's mm -hmm. the youngest Republican to ever run. Um, I really like Cash. I think if he would have done the full hour with us, he would have performed better in Iowa personally. So that's on him. But I was you mean very... Vivek? Yeah, I'm, I was joking. But oh. how about this? How about Nikki Haley after getting thoroughly her ass beat she finished even behind desantis she finished third out of four mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. said today that this is now a two-person race meaning her and trump did you see that yeah yeah i did i i can see that kind of hillary clinton logic there yeah you know she's, she's really real terrible clinton well she's a neocon like clinton so that's how they right. think and they are talking about how their ability and their real power is in splitting the vote and she's right. right in that way, as Hillary is right in her way, that splitting, you know, making women a uh, kind of a a voting block hostage with a single issue. And then right. they think they have power. But, you know, I think regular women who have to pay bills and live in the real world are going to bypass that old bullshit this time. Well, they said Trump did better with Iowa voters that were women than even the men. I don't know if you saw that, but that was very, very encouraging. Well, I love that. And well, the moms, right about, the moms are pissed. And like you said, when you have paper ballots, when you actually have one vote for one candidate and you can't cheat or put dead people mm -hmm. or drop off ballots before in the end, Trump usually wins in a landslide. Absolutely. Um, the people so, want Trump. And, uh, the you know, uh, I don't know if it's the majority, what with all the immigrants they've let over that are, you know, from Marxist countries or, or uh, other kind of countries where they don't understand what democracy or voting rights even means. Yeah. But they all think, hey, we're going to keep voting for Joe Biden because he's giving us the perks. So they're buying votes, which is so illegal. It is. And, uh, we're going to have to get our arms around that, too, because they're going to reply. It, it really is a genocidal war on working class America, everything they do. 
particularly people of color in working class communities. But they, they're they fine with it apparently so far. Some of them are waking up and we do pray they wake up even more, but their leaders just are leading them right off a cliff to sleep. And, you know, of course they're getting paid real well to do it, but it's just sad. This is a class war. I think racial- you're right. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, Cash said it when he was talking about defense contractors behind it or Nikki Haley, who's got the Koch brothers and, you know, Raytheon, she was on the board of Raytheon. Like the, the fact that and we said this with Cor- Jimmy Corsetti. People last week. who have people who are tied in with guys making money on sending poor American mm-hmm. kids off to die in rich men's wars. They shouldn't be nowhere near as government. Absolutely. And that's pretty much the government. Trump is the only outlier there. And I think that's what it is. I think when we talked about with Corsetti last week, the fact is he's called the war criminal family, the Bushes, the Kochs, the Clintons, Obama, the Bidens, that they are, they lied to get us in Iraq. And every step of the way he's told the truth, Trump has. That's why he won uh, off Twitter in, in 2016. Like he literally campaigned on Twitter and won the presidency just by telling the truth. And I think that that's why they hate him. And, I, and I've been talking about, is it China behind it? Is it the pedos? And, you know, the more I think about it, I think it's all the defense above. contractors. It's all, all the above, but I, all that too. he's costing Chinese Raytheon. Pedo. The Chinese, Chinese pedos that married Jews and live in Mar- Marin County. Yeah, it's true. But if you cut off that funding, from the American defense contractors to export the only export America has, which is weapons. And you start fucking with that. Well, they're going to start fucking with you. When you're you're selling weapons to both sides of every, uh, of every war you started with the false flag, every government you overthrew um, Obama and then bombed eight Brown countries after um, for money. You know, I knew Obama was nothing but trouble when, I in in uh, 2007 I was all for Hillary, and then this kid Obama, he had his big sponsors were nuclear energy, and I was yeah. like, oh my god, he's a, he's a, talk about used car salesman like they call Vivek. Yeah, this guy's a used nuke salesman. He's taking money from, you know, a a class of human that, you know, wants depopulation for the planet. Yeah, he's fat. And, uh, you know, they got to have good, they really pay good speechwriters for that level of uh, propaganda. And I knew at the time that the people writing that propaganda were a bunch of fuckers I fired off my show because they couldn't write for shit. And I knew it yeah. and I tracked yeah. it. Too. They all end up writing for the DNC. Well, isn't it funny that a lot of Republicans don't trust Vivek? They go, he came out of nowhere when he was actually like, a billionaire who built a bunch of companies, but Obama was a city organizer or city planner, whatever the fuck that means in Chicago, the most corrupt government. Community ever. organizer. Community organizer, literally that out means- of nowhere. Yeah. And everyone yeah. bought that, that shit up. He could get the boots on the street. That's what they're looking yeah. for. Just like Hitler could. Yeah. You know, I always call uh, Hitler the brown Obama. No, I'm That's kidding. Hilarious. I always call <laughs> Obama the black Hitler because yeah, he is. I mean- he organizes street gangs to be the uh, power arm of his party. Yeah. Like Stalin did, like they all do, all the dictators. And everyone that talks about Hitler back in the day are like, he was a great speaker, great orator. That's what they say about Obama, too. So He's never not, trust no. the I always said he, was a, he couldn't even do good on a Monday night comedy show. I always because <laughs> they were like, oh, he's got such good timings, the comic said. I go, no, he don't. He's, you can see it coming for three miles down the road. Yeah. His self-congratulatory uh, delivery of his material, you could tell he didn't write it. And uh, also, he ain't funny. And um, I don't care what they say as a comedian. He couldn't, He couldn't, as they say, ad-lib a fart at a bean-eating contest. But That's they just love him line. because he looks, he looks the part. And he is the part. But, he you know, he, uh, he, don't, he don't mean well for any of the working class in this country or anywhere. So you're encouraged by the Iowa caucus last night, the results, obviously. And you think we're going to ride this wave and you think Trump's going to win the general election? Because I do. I'm just asking you. 
I think it's the end of the great awakening. Enough is awake, and now we're going to get justice, and we're going to keep it rolling. This train is bound for glory. Hell yeah, man! I saw a lot of people say Trump's going to be going to get back and use his presidency if he wins for revenge, and I'm like, fuck no, yeah, that's Biden. why we're wanting. Biden, well, no, he's not revenge. No, but if true revenge, revenge, justice, which it doesn't. That's, that's what it means. No, but revenge would be like. Uh, kicking Christopher Ray, uh, you know, people in positions of power that are evil, replacing them with ones that aren't. That's a revenge story. I don't think they, well, they may say revenge, like he's just going to go and punish people that talk bad about him. But no, I mean, like, we're going to get justice. You're absolutely right. We're going to get the people we're, out. We're going to get justice, not revenge. Revenge is something you get on the street. Justice You're is right. what you get in the courts. That's what we're going to get in the courts, right. bitch. Not on the street right. like you, because you ain't educated and you don't know what the fuck. All you can do is kick somebody in the teeth when they're down. That's Sorry, right. it's over. So Vivek or Elise Stefanik for vice president? Or, um, oh my God, the best. I can't, why can I not remember her name from Arizona? Our, our great friend. Carrie Lake. Carrie Lake. Carrie. I don't think she's going to do I but agree, but. For the Senate. She'll be She's in running the Senate. for Senate. We, yeah. need her. we need her in the Senate. I think he'd be smart to go Vivek. That's why I asked him, Vivek, would you take number two? And would take Vivek said the smart thing that anyone who would accept them by said. I consider myself, here's what he said. I consider myself also to be a person of vision. So I wouldn't want to, you know, you know, not be true to myself in being a leader. That's a great vice president right there. Absolutely. So well, I think... Know. Trump could do a lot worse. I hope he'll do it. I also like Byron Donalds. I think he's a real. The Republican Party needs to be led by black people since the beginning of time. That's who founded the Republican Party, Frederick Douglass. All these people were the first Republicans to oppose the Democrats who, you know, loved slavery, started the KKK, and then did the Nothing's big old changed. school. But they, I like Byron Donalds, and I vote for him because I'm like, black people really need to come in and take some control from these uh, people that are in the and, and control the Republican Party because a lot of them are more racist than they are conservative. They need to go. I agree. We got to root out racism in the Republican Party. Let the Democrats be the racist party. We don't need that shit. We're populists. We we, we get rid populist. of racism. We don't we don't sit there and glorify it like Fawny with her pawny. <laughs> Pony, is it Pony or Penny Penny? What is it's the pan? Pa it's panis, like penis Panis, like penis with an a. Yeah, penis. you actually said penis on this show. Uh, I all said right, penis. well, penis. It's, yeah, it's Bonnie penis. Yeah, it's penis. penis. It's Think about pan like like pan, like you cook it. Well, he said fanny, and I said no. It's actually fanny, like right. that has a penis. But then it yeah. was panis. Yeah, it's fanny panis. Bonnie well, and her pants. She I've said been she stumbled. I said, well, she needs to get her panis removed and she won't stumble so much. Maybe that's what the problem is. She's, I know, because I used to have a large panis myself and I had to get it removed in a tummy tuck. They said it was 13 pounds of skin. I remember I was there for that. They actually took my mother's panis, which, by the way, a panis is your belly that hangs in front of your pelvic area. So it's not just the belly, it's the actual yeah. flab. Like if you ever watch really fat people run, it bounces off their knees, that's yeah. your panis. My mm -hmm. mom actually had them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work it out with my hands. They actually grabbed her panis, pulled it, mm -hmm. snipped it, and then stitched mm -hmm. together. Sort of mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. and I remember, I saw it when I was a they kid. They cut me down near in half from hip to hip to get rid of that panis. And I had one of the largest panis in the business. <laughs> the Milton Burrell of panis. <laughs> Where did it go? Well, you should have. I went to the bathroom. I could feel it touch the water, just like Milton Burrell said. <laughs> could you? Weird. You should have saved that. We could have made a fortune off your panis on you. My panis. Well, I think they saved several Indonesian children with skin grafts. You cut out. Oh, you used it for grafts. I think a whole tribe of Indonesian children were saved <laughs> that were caught on fire. I think something like that. Uh, it's got patches of like white hairy skin on their face. Well, it's more like, uh, well, it's more like tan with blue lines through it and red stretch marks, red, white, and blue, <laughs> baby. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. you did great today. 
I'll let you go. Okay. Don't forget to leave your computer open. But one more thing. I did get some inside information and I, I am connected. I think Trump is leaning towards, and I hope I'm saying this right, Elise Stefanik. Oh, I love her. No, it's got to be a Jew. If it's got to be a Jew, she knows the shit. If he goes Stefanik, if you go Stefanik, you'll never go back. I don't know how this is. Stefanik, she's supersonic. Fearless, supersonic, superhero, lover. Oh, yeah. She keeps a Shabbat. This is the time for the Jewish woman. Elise, let's do this. Let's do this, right. Elise. Well, we'll see. And also, wow. if you've noticed my sweet ass merch, you that can go to nice. Roseanne. Roseanne it's Bar- nice, right? The Roseanne Bar- really Bar- Podcast. I saw some people wearing it. I was so happy. That was sweet. Oh, no. It's These have been cool selling. Looking. It's a good logo. Thank you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, go Thank to RoseanneBar.com and order some merch if you mm-hmm. want to be hip like us. I just wanted to take a second to tell you and remind you again that we are now affiliated with Gold Co. You can go to rblikesgold.com. That is my mother's uh, landing page with them and fill out the IRA kit form. Um, That's what they specialize in. If you have a retirement account, you got your money in savings or stocks and you have this big plan, you, you can't, you cannot rely on it. Things are too volatile. I suggest highly that you look into transferring your retirement into into gold and silver, at least a portion of it, because we don't know what's going to happen with the stock market. I mean, Biden's shitting his pants. Literally, an election's coming. China's here. I mean, you know, you know how insane things are. So, go in there, fill out the form. If you have a retirement account, uh, they'll walk you through it. You got to do it. You can change it years later if you, if you're not comfortable or things get better. But right now, put as much of your money safely in gold and silver as you can you can also just buy gold and silver on this website you don't have to do the ira kit that's what they specialize in that's what they you know that's the product that they're best known for but you don't have to do it just fill it out when you talk to someone say i just want to buy gold and silver bars they'll talk you through that as well so go to rblikesgold.com and protect your wealth thank you and uh i guess that's it this episode will air thursday god bless God bless you. I love you. You did great today. Don't forget to leave your computer open. And I will see you tomorrow for Ken Paxton. Yay!